Hi, y'all. It's Angela. I'm back for another episode of Business Unveiled, and I'm super excited to be talking with an amazing creative that I was introduced to several months ago when I was actually looking to do something really different in terms of entertainment that could be used at a corporate conference. And so I'm going to be speaking with Natalie Spiro today. And if you don't know what she does or who she is, you're going to want to tune in today because she's so creative and goal oriented. But just I want to, her to share with us today just her professional experiences. I mean, she's been in the industry for over 25 years. She's an entrepreneur by nature, which many of us are. And she started this amazing worldwide, I would say, entertainment option called Drum Cafe. And the organization was born in 2002. And she specializes in developing and delivering this amazing <laughs> entertainment. It's like team building and leadership development. And it really is for companies that are looking, uh, I would say, for like something unique, outstanding. When people walk away, they're like, holy cow, that was amazing and different. We weren't expecting that. And she's worked with clients like Google. We all know what Google is. Disney, Pricewaterhouse, Coopers, um, uh, lots of amazing clients. And so it's super high impact. And it's really about interacting your audience, engaging your audience. And these performances are absolutely incredible. Like, if you don't know what it is, you got to go to the website and watch these videos because it's just super different. So, Natalie, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me, Angela. I'm grateful to be here. Yeah. Before we jump in and talk about the entertainment aspect of what you have created over the years where did you start in your whole journey of entrepreneurship like did you grow up in the music industry or how did all this get started welcome to business unveiled the podcast designed to help you thrive in the creative community here's your host events and productivity consultant angela profit What's up, GSD leaders? Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Business Unveiled, where we share expert tips and secrets from top creative industry professionals. You know we're going to take you behind the scenes of our experiences, share with you what we've learned from them, and how it's made us stronger. Because no one said it's easy owning a business, right? But it's a lot more fun when you've got a strong support team around you. And that's exactly what we do at GSD Creative. We're right there by your side. And I'm so excited that you've chosen this podcast to take the first step in growing a productive, profitable, and successful, wildly successful business within the hospitality and creative industry. Today's podcast is being brought to you by one of my favorite platforms, Kajabi. So stop trading your time for money. Kajabi provides digital entrepreneurs an all-in-one platform which enables you to create a life of freedom on your terms, whatever that may be. Everything is housed under one platform. So there's really no need for multiple services. Kajabi really has all of the tools that you need in one place if you're looking for a home to share your knowledge and build online courses. You have a community of like-minded people with proven success in selling knowledge online and the support with Kajabi is amazing. Give it a try today bit.ly slash a p kajabi that's a great question no actually it didn't start in the music industry although i uh, I, I was a dancer growing up um so i guess i have some kind of rhythm um <laughs> but, but uh i actually grew up in johannesburg south africa and uh my father i could say is a, is a serial entrepreneur and so I feel I, I got all my learning and training through, you know, him being the committed workaholic, so to speak. Uh, he was pretty much in everything from owning a casino to developing a different kind of 
um, cow called beefalo, mixing a cow and a buffalo to make a different kind of meat and everything in between. So, you know, I was exposed from a very young age um, to that type of entrepreneurship. But I, you know, growing up in Johannesburg, um, I really followed the path of going to university. I'm an industrial psychologist by profession, uh, then did an MBA, which, uh, you know, master's in business administration, um, which really gave me a little bit of knowledge in a lot of different areas. Um, although I specialized kind of in corporate strategy and marketing and, you know, I tried the corporate route, uh, or you guys say route here. Yeah. (laughs) I tried the corporate route, uh, at the beginning, I joined, you know, I joined Coopers and Lie brand, which later became Price Waterhouse Coopers, um, as their kind of brand doyen. Uh, I then joined, uh, you know, that didn't work out very well. I joined an, a, a bank, un, a Investec Bank, um, and then an ethics company. And I really realized that that I wanted to be on my own. And, you know, kind of create and, and design my own destiny. So, I started a company in South Africa, uh, which really was a, you know, we, we sold houseware goods um, to the black market. And I don't mean that in an illegal way. Right. Uh, <laughs> the the um, African market. Um, and, you know, what happened was because of all the, the, the violent crime in South Africa that uh, it, it, didn't, it didn't kind of uh, sustain um, had a lot of problems in that arena. So uh, I started a, a jewelry business, a jewelry design business, in fact, um, with a, a jeweler and, you know, built up that business in South Africa. And really that's kind of how I got to America in the first place. I did a, I did a trade show in Vegas. It's a very large jewelry trade show in Vegas. And at that trade show met Nordstrom's one of the buyers, and they wanted me to come into five of their stores, um, which is literally how I emigrated um, to the US, which was in 2000. Um, So that's kind of how I started um, my entrepreneurial career. Uh, I don't know if you want me to carry on and let you know how I got into Drum Cafe North America. I would love to know. Okay, so well, I got to America, and America is a huge, obviously huge place. Lots of competition. Uh, you know, was was involved with Nordstrom's doing a bunch of different trunk shows all around California, um, and because of because of the uh, huge competition and the fact that I was importing, you know, semi precious stones and pretty much most of my made my my ready made uh, jewelry pieces. Uh, from South Africa with import tariffs and, and, and things like that. It just, it just became untenable. So I um, literally went on a weekend kind of, uh, you could call it a spiritual retreat, if you will. Um, the woman's name was Debbie Ford. And at that retreat, she's now dead. She was my mentor um, who became my mentor over time. But uh, at that retreat, I, um, you know, we did a a visualization, if you will. And in that visualization, I saw, uh, you know, I was going up one of these escalators that was going way, way up. And, you know, I saw this huge, big boulder in front of me and I was really filled with fear and anxiety. And what I, you know, I I was like, what am I going to do? Because when I hit the top, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to crash into this major boulder, boulder. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and, uh, you know, all of a sudden this wizard jumped out behind the boulder and said, Natalie, you, you're the wizard. Look for the wizard inside of you. and You can transform this and move through this. Yeah. And it was a weird. It was a really weird uh, visualization. And at the end of it, I, I, I got a sentence, which was, you know, you, you came here to shift and change energy on this planet by one or by many. And I had no idea what that meant. Um, Anyway, two weeks later, a friend of mine from South Africa called me. He had a show in South Africa called Drumstruck, which in fact is going to be in Dollywood soon. Oh my Uh, gosh. In March. Yeah. It's going to uh, do a three week run in Dollywood. Um, But he called me and he had this interactive stomp type program um, or or show extravaganza. And he called and said, you know, you should really 
look at bringing this corp this this into corporate arenas with all of your you know corporate background this would be a great fit for you and really to cut a long story short i went to a party and met the, a senior vp at motorola who got chatting we got chatting and she was like what are you going to be doing in the us and i said well uh, you know i've got this amazing concept that i'm going to be bringing in you know drumming and co- i had no idea what it was even about <laughs> and i obviously must have been very passionate and inspired her and she turned around and said to me well look i i've got a a conference for a hundred of my leaders in Vegas at the Stratosphere, and it was on February fifth. And she said, "I'm not going to hire a keynote speaker. I want you." And I was like, "Wow, fantastic!" And I'd had no, I just had no clue what I was going to do. <laughs> but my next steps: I flew to South Africa, kind of trained on a drum, bought a hundred drums in in one of the farmers markets that was shipped to me from Ghana um, in West Africa. And literally, that's how, you know, I stored them in my garage at home. I found some Ghanaian drummers in San Diego. And off we went to Vegas and delivered this amazing event. Um, And that's really how this started in the U.S. Wow. Which is not a normal story at all. (laughs) No, No, you're right. That's so cool. So, like, for for those who are listening and they don't know anything about like drum cafe and what type of entertainment that you all deliver. Can you like with words, paint a picture of like when you guys go and perform for an opening conference, like with Google, like what, what do, what can people expect? Okay. So first off, if I can just chunk back a little, you know, a little bit backwards, um, so my operation is Drum Cafe North America. Uh-huh. And basically, you know, I think people kind of um, see this mainly as entertainment. And there's no doubt that this has an entertainment factor to it because we we create these massive wow factor events, um, you know, that that really inspire and motivate the audience, you know, in terms of, what they've got to do and it it really busts them open because we're using drumming and drumming is a primal, you know, kind of behavior. People love beating a drum. Um, So there's, there's definitely the fun kind of unique entertainment factor. And there are many events that we do just pure entertainment where we do these big, you know, wow factors with no engagement. But I would say that 95% of what we do, um, is as you just said is you know open up these uh, whether they ma- they massive sales conferences or marketing conferences or you know board retreats that we've done for Google X or you know I do a, a leadership development program for Kaiser Permanente um, or a huge sales kickoff for Google. What happens is that everybody in the audience firstly gets a drum. So it's a djembe drum. It's made in West Africa. Um, it kind of looks like one of those egg timers with a skin on it. Um, and, you know, there's one on every chair. And I typically bring a, you know, a team of musicians who are top class, world class musicians. You know, people who have played for Duran Duran and uh, Beyonce and J-Lo, et cetera. Um, and we, you know, we have a team of musicians. We kind of break into this really upbeat, energetic um, typically West African, Afro-Cuban rhythm, Samba Hege maybe, um, just depending on the theme of the conference, we fling open the, the conference doors and people kind of rush in. And, you know, it's so untypical of what they used to where there's some play, they come in with coffee and their breakfasts and, you know, they, they, they having music, you know, recorded music playing and they take their seats and they're chatting. This is kind of this, wow, what is about to happen here? Because yeah, drums on chairs and this team of musicians on stage really kind of jamming it. And they, they kind of run in. Some people run in and grab a drum. Other people, you know, sit at the back. Um, you know, it's like the microcosm of that greater macrocosm um, of people who want to fully engage and people who are waiting to see and then they engage. Um, so, you know, they come in, they grab a drum and, and then typically our program starts. And 
so the, the, the program is, is really around, um, you know, it has a team building element to it. Uh, it has a learning element to it because throughout the program we talk, you know, the, it, it's about communication, it's about collaboration, it's about facilitation, it's about listening, you know, deep listening, it's about kind of following um, instruction, it's about giving each other feedback and connecting together in harmony as one. It's about busting silos between different functions of an organization or within one division in a specific organization. So, you know, it's a, it's a hands-on approach to team building and learning and new ways of collaborating that really kind of um, pulls the parallel of making music together as an orchestra and working together within an organization or a community or a tribe to achieve that uni unified goal. So do you, when people walk in and they see a drum on their seat yeah. and they're like, I'm not musically inclined, like I don't play a drum, like how do you, do the performers get the audience involved if they're like kind of uncomfortable or introverted or like, or do people just stand up and start beating on the drum and like, they're all cool with it? <laughs> yeah, no. I, and, and that's a great question. I guess there, there are some organizations where everybody gets involved at the outset, right? Because they just jump in, hands in, just getting on the drum and whether they have rhythm or not, it doesn't really matter because I actually say that everybody, everybody has rhythm inside of them. Two reasons, you know, if you can breathe and you can walk at the same time, you've got rhythm. Right. And we all, you know, were in our mother's womb before we were born. And there was that heartbeat that was, you know, five inches from our, from our earlobe and, and our soul, which was kind of that do doom, do doom, do doom. And that heartbeat is a four, four in musical rhythm. And, it, and, and that is the rhythm that we grew up that, you know, once we're born, we, it, we, it, we have it innate in us. So um, I think people, you know, feel that they don't have rhythm, but actually everyone has rhythm. They might not be able to play a complex, you know, piece of music or read musical sheets, but there's absolutely no doubt that they each can hold a downbeat. And, and we really kind of make it simplistic for audiences because we want to meet people at their map of the world, right? This is about breaking down the, your, those barriers. And it's not only the barriers, the, the silos that exist within, within companies um, and, and divisions with, within companies, but it's also breaking down our own personal barriers, our own fears, our own anxieties around, you know, how do I perform? How do I show up? Um, do I have rhythm? Can I kind of participate? This is all about engaging absolutely everyone. And those who don't engage at the beginning, um, typically come into the engagement because of the people around them. So the people around them are engaging and they look around on their left and their right. And then they think, okay, maybe I can, you know, just try this. And they try it a little bit. And mostly at the end of the day, those people are the ones who are standing up and banging that drum with pride and, <laughs> and, 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 and you know, huge amounts of energy. So, you know, we never force anybody to do anything, Angela. It's, it's really around meeting people at their map of the world. But uh, in, in 20, you know, I've been doing this in America for the last, what, 18 years. And in 18 years, you know, I've found that most people participate. And those that don't, you never know whether they are having a privately amazing moment or experience, right. nevertheless. Right. So what is it the, and I'm sure like when people are certainly not expecting this, especially at a conference, yeah. like what is it that the clients love? So the first thing is that it is absolutely unique, right? They, every time people go to a conference and I, I, I can, can tell you this, that probably a hundred percent of my clients have said to me year after year, you know, this was the best thing that we ever did at this conference and what are we gonna do to top it the next time? Um, because people do a lot of different things at conferences, right? And they typically come in with walk-in music, they have a bunch of talking heads on stage with PowerPoints, 
Um, not to say that those aren't inspiring because <laughs> I love it <laughs> because many, many are inspiring. Um, but oftentimes they also people from inside of the organization, um, you know, putting lots of figures and numbers and, and, and stuff on, on flip charts or on, on, on PowerPoints and, you know, doing that, they, they have that expectation year after year. Um, so what this does at the outset is that first off, they, they listening outside because they've gone to have some kind of a breakfast or coffee. And then they hear this music, even though it's faint through the doors of the conference or the wall of the conference um, ballroom. And they hear this faint music and it's upbeat and it's energetic. And they already wondering what is going to happen here. And so it kind of puts them from their head straight away into their heart space because that's what music does. And it, it puts you in your body rather than just cognitively in your head. And as the, as the doors open and they hear this music loud and they see drums on the chairs, it's like, oh, wow, we're going to be actually participating. We're not just watching a show, which is so kind of the Western way of doing things, right? We're yep. actually engaged. And the, the, the process of engaging people, getting them out of their heads into their bodies and heart spaces, puts them in that emotional space. And, you know, I don't know, I don't know the exact quote. I can't remember. And I think it was Maya Angelou who once said something about people will, you know, They'll, they won't remember what, what you said or that, what you showed them, but they'll always remember how you made them feel. Absolutely. And, and I think that that is the, the, the core crux. And I have had so many clients who saw me in 2002 at an event and they don't remember my name, but they call me from somehow they, they, they kept my details and they said, you know, they will say to me, I, I remember what you did and how you made me feel. And I need you to come back and do that for my team at, you know, Microsoft, Google, Kaiser Permanente, or the city of Duluth, because I'm building a community center. And, you know, it's that that really blows me away um, because it really is about how they felt during the experience and that they were all engaged. Right. And so do you ever, when you guys go in there, do you ever find any challenges or like, how do you overcome that? Like, I just, I know that some people like as a planner, when I'm hiring, yeah. you know, I'm like, oh dear God, I hope these people like this. And you know, I just, oh yeah. Are there some challenges that you have to overcome so that people feel comfortable with you guys coming in? Definitely, definitely. Um, so f the first challenge has always been in the name um, because people initially think it's a cafe where people actually go right. and commute. And so we, exactly. And, and so we have to, you know, talk them out of what we are not instead of what we actually are, um, which is actually, you know, I'm going to just share, but I'm, I probably will be rebranding in a few months to yeah. a different brand name called the Rhythm Agenda. Cool. Um, so I'll keep you I'll keep you informed about that. But um, that's the first challenge. I think the second challenge is that people are planners, and and I say this with the utmost respect and humility, is that most people think that this is um, a drum circle. So they might have attended a drum circle on a beach, uh, you know, at a full moon, uh, possibly naked or not. Um, with a lot of other substances <laughs> being passed around. And they have an impression that this is some kind of a spiritual woo-woo, you know, we're going to get into this theta uh, <laughs> trance mode. And I definitely am not going to have my Google engineers uh, go there because that's not, that's not going to be acceptable. Right. Um, so that's another challenge we have to kind of work through and an, an, an objection, I guess. Um I think budget is always an issue for every company. And, you know, I honestly feel that once they, once people have experienced us, um, because this really is an experiential thing and it's, it's quite hard to explain an experience. So I've got lots of video material on my website and, you know, I'm, I'm about to create some kind of a sales video to help people, um, you know, break down the program and get them to really see that it's, it's not a spiritual kind of drum circle experience. 
It's not entertainment, pure entertainment. But what it is, is, is somebody delivering, a, you know, a keynote, a very motivational, inspirational key, keynote, which team, which builds the team, busts silos and builds in a lot of content, high level content and deep level content that the organization is looking to parlay to the audience, but, but doing it in a way that's not just hitting one dimension, which is, you know, the, 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 the brain. Um, I mean, the, 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 the cognitive element, just your, whether it's just auditory or visual, this is the complete experience is involved in parlaying what needs to be parlayed. Um, so the one positive thing I always get uh, from clients after an event is, man, how did you know so much about this organization? Like, do you work here? Have you worked here in, in secret or, you know, and <laughs> have you been spying? <laughs> yeah. You know, you should be the CEO of this company. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I've, I've had a lot of that come over the years. And, and I think, you know, when I hear that, I'm like, wow, okay, we nailed it. Um, because it really is about that. So, you know, those are, th I would say the three main objections. I, I can just share a story if I have some time to do oh, that. Absolutely, but please. I remember when I first started, I, uh, there's a company, um, I, I'm sure most people in California know Qualcomm. And um, anyway, so it's a huge company. Um, they're pretty much involved in, in everything, you know, devices and, you know, software, hardware. Anyway, they, the, the marketing director really wanted to bring me in. She kind of really understood the concept and got it. And um, she said, look, I just cannot convince this, my, my, my C-suite. Can you come in for a meeting? And I said, absolutely. And I sat, you know, in a boardroom in, in a U-shape with every kind of the, every member of the C-suite. So HR, finance, operations, whatever. Gosh. There was going to be, you know, 600 people in the audience. Um, and they were having this, this, this event and they wanted me to open. And it was going to be in a big conference room and they were going to put people in uh, beach chairs, um, you know, sitting in beach chairs. Anyway, you know, they threw a whole bunch of different things at me. And at the end, um, you know, most of them were absolutely convinced it was the way to go. And the finance guy said to me, oh, I'm just, you know, I'm still not convinced, Natalie. And I said, you know what, Mike, here's the thing. If this thing doesn't work and if people, if you feel after the event that this was not a success, I'm absolutely willing to give you your large check back. Yeah. Like, you know, being the finance guy, he was like, yeah, that's great. Okay, excellent. No risk. I'm going to, I'm going to go for it. I'm in. <laughs> I'm in. Exactly. And uh, anyway, we delivered the event and I remember watching him sit, he was sitting at the front. He was in board shorts. He had a, you know, baseball cap on turned the other way around because it was a kind of a casual beach thing, beach event, but in a, you know, in a ballroom. And he was standing on his beach chair with a drum under his arm and he was bashing it away, going crazy. <laughs> and I remember going up to him after the event with the marketing, um, you know, the marketing executive. And I said, Mike, so tell me your thoughts. Do you want your check back? Yeah. Like, are you crazy? not in this accent, obviously, are you crazy? He's like, I don't even know what we are going to do next year to top this. You were amazing. So it was kind of that. That's awesome. Yeah. You know, which was, which was so awesome. Um, so yeah, I think, I think once people have experienced it, uh, the, the fact is that I, I would say that 98% of my business is referral and repeat business. People who leave a company, go to another company, and bring me there and then they leave there and they go to the next company. So that's kind of, I've built relationships with people. So it doesn't really make a difference where they are. And they, they, they really bring me into every single one of their companies in one of their events or several. I love it. So yeah. how do you find the performers? Like, do you have the same people that are part of this experience or does it matter like, do you find local people that are just uh, freelancers that play drums or how do you, or do you have the same 10 people that, you know, fly all over the world? Right. That's, that's a great question too. And, and it's important. It's an important question because of, from a client perspective, obviously budget is the issue. And, um, 
you know, if, if I had my druthers, I would use one team because, you know, when you, when you have a team, you, you, you really bond as a team. It's kind of like a band, mm -hmm. you know, you, you bond as a band. And when one member of that band's not there and you replace that member, it's a very different vibrational feel. 100%. But unfortunately, yep. because that's not a possibility with every single client, um, I have trained up, uh, you know, several facilitators who will be, you know, who will do the programs uh, that, that, that I run. We design programs together, the facilitators and, and myself. So we create new products. So we keep innovating versus just imitating. Um, drummers typically are brought to to me because they they come through the other drummers that are there because their community is close knit. So, um, you know, they'll be playing in another band potentially at a wedding and they have friends and they'll ask, you know, their friends to contact me and, you know, we then audition and train those people. Um, but, you know, over the years, I've probably got a, a group of say 20 solid um, drummers and musicians, percussionists, uh, pretty much all over America. So I can draw on, you know, different talent in different areas where conferences happen. Because typically there, there are probably 20 major conference cities in the US and that's where most conferences happen. So, um, you know, the drummers are, are, are near to those areas or in those areas. That's so neat. And yeah, because the, the main reason I ask is like, We'll have a client. This actually happened recently. Yeah. And the client saw a band at another event. And then she's like, I want that band for my event. And I'm, I mean, she just flat out said, that's who we're having. Like, it wasn't like Angela negotiate or anything like that. It was like, that's who we're having. Yeah. So I contacted the agency. I had zero relationship which I was fine with it because the client said, I saw them, I worked with them, I want to have them. Right. And so then the event comes and the band was great. And we, we go through the event. No one says anything to me. And then after the event was over, you know, it's like one o'clock in the morning and everyone's loading out. And I don't even know why one of the girls in the band came up to me and asked me a question. I don't even remember what she asked me, but she said, well, the reason I'm asking is because like, I normally don't play with this band. And so I just, I wasn't sure. I don't know. She was clarifying something and I'm like, what do you mean you don't normally play with the band? Yeah. And she's like, oh, well, one of the singers, you know, couldn't be here or something. And so i was like, okay, I just didn't think anything of it. You know, I was trying to get loadout ready. Yeah. And then at the end of the event, the lady that was in charge of it came up to me and she's like, everything was great. She's like, the only thing is that's not the band <laughs> that was oh my. at my, uh, the event where I saw them. And I'm like, what? And I mean, in my head, I'm like, thank God that girl had come up and said, I, because I thought it was awkward and then it got even more awkward. And I'm like, what do you mean? And she's like, well, they did a great job, but like, that's not the band that, that we hired. And I'm like, okay, well, I don't, I don't even know what to say. I mean, it's over. I'm like, I'll contact the person that you had put me in contact with and find out like, that's just weird, but at least everyone had fun. You know, I was like trying to end the conversation on a high note. Right. And so, you know, on Monday I emailed the agency and I'm like, Hey, I'm just wondering like, well, what the hell happened? And, um, you know, instead of them saying something like, Oh, somebody got sick or they got behind in another corporate event, like they're like, Oh, it's in fine print and the contract at the bottom that we can, we have the right to replace you know, if, if, if a band, if that band gets a bigger gig and, or basically it didn't say it just like this, but basically what they were saying is that if they got offered more money at a bigger gig, then yeah. they could send a substitute band without any question whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that's effed up. And so I emailed back and I'm like, okay, two things. Number one, you should probably tell the planner in charge just so I'm armed with the, the information. Yeah. Um, and two, like, I guess you're not in the relationship building business because this was our first event together. And obviously you all know what you're doing. I know what I'm doing. I've been in it for a long time, but like, that's like not cool to like, just 
pulled that over on me. And then thank God, you know, the band was good. I just would have liked to have known. And so now, and then it's actually happened to us at another event with a different agency where they sent substitutes. And so, and again, it's like, just tell us, but what sucks is like when we use an agency and the client sees videos and the client picks the the act based on the video and then they come up to us and they're like those are not the people in the video and I'm like yeah you're right they're not um maybe there's some confusion here and so you know I go over and talk to them and they're like nope we're at the right place and at that event at that corporate event it did not go well they did not really outperform the people in the video and so the agency ended up having to refund their all their money because the client was so pissed and so I'm just like, is this a thing? Like, is this happening <laughs> more and more? And I'm just like completely naive to it because I'm not in the music agency industry. And so I just wonder, like, do you like, am I crazy? Or is this like a thing that is like happening in the industry? Well, I mean, I have to say, I don't experience that. I, you know, we don't <laughs> operate that way. But because you know we're not just coming to play music, um, we're coming to do a facilitated, um, engaging experience where you know I have to deliver um, content that is you know high level content. So the people that I train as facilitators, you know, have gone through a ton of training, and I will never let them on stage until they um, they perform to 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 the to the best, you know expectation that I have of them, I, I would mm-hmm. never put them on stage. Um, with, with, the, with the musicians, you know, all of the musicians are trained in the program. And, and so, you know, if, we, if I'm selling to a client, if you approached me, Angela, and said, listen, I have a client um, and, the, you know, this is who they saw or, you know, they, they want you or whatever, I, I will make every endeavor to be the person who's going to facilitate and you know and and then i bring my team that i play with who who plays regularly with me and you know i had a client once who we we, we had this experience and we did we took a thousand of their leaders through a program through like 10 different programs and they wanted um they wanted me to do the you know i was the one there who did the kind of i don't know the trial if you if you will um the, 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 the trial program in front of all their coaches and they loved it. And then they, you know, they booked it based on that. And then I wanted to send another facilitator and I asked them and I said, let me send another facilitator who, because it was every Tuesday and Thursday and I'm also trying to run the business. And, um, you know, they said, let's try this person. And after that, you know, one trial, they said, no, this is not going to work for us. So we, we need you to be on the event. And I was like, well, then you get me on the event. And yeah. I did all the programs thereafter. So I think, you know, I there's no doubt transparency is vital. Um, and, you know, some clients, when I've said I'm going to put on another facilitator, I've, you know, sent them a video of that facilitator, you know, doing facilitation so that they can see the facilitator. But also, a lot of my clients, I would say most of them, trust me to choose and put the right because it's my it's my business reputation mm-hmm. um, at stake. You know, I don't want not even one unsatisfied client, um, and I'm building relationships all the time for for into the future. So, you know, it's it's way more important to me. I'd make less money rather than than do that to a client, and and that's. I don't, that's my philosophy. I'm not saying that that's everybody's philosophy. Um, potentially with bands or managers of bands or whatever, they might mm-hmm. do that. I, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not privy to that, Angela, unfortunately. I don't, know. <laughs> I don't know. So how many performers do you have typically? And is it, is it like all or none? Or can you do a small group or a large group? Yeah. And how does it talk us through like that experience? Absolutely. So, you know, we've done events with 10 people in the audience and I've done an event with 5,000 people in the audience. Um, so uh, depending on how many people are in the audience, I choose the number of people on stage 
because you also, A, don't want to have too many people on stage and overpower the audience um, or too few people when it's a large audience. You know, you want that kind of balance. Um, also depends on the design of the program. You know, I'm doing something right now for a tech company and we're doing a 15 minute wow interactive opening using boom whackers, which are these kind of colored percussion sticks um, because the company has cool. five, you know, five new core values and these boom whackers have five different colors, each have a different note on a pentatonic scale. And so with each note, you can assign a core value to the note. You can assign a core value and a, I mean a rhythm to that note um, and that core value and then create this kind of symphony of rhythm. Um, but I'm having this, you know, big wow thing and eat and I'm putting in a, 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 an, an instrument that will represent each core value. So an instrument, there'll be a kind of a two minute solo of that instrument and then a spoken word of the core value, which we've written, you know, we've written spoken words, um, poetry for each of those core values for the client. Um, so on that, you know, I have five people, one per instrument and, you know, uh, uh, me as a facilitator. Um, so there's six people on stage, uh, even though there's only 200 people in the audience. Um, but typically, you know, in the afternoon, I'm doing a, a, a keynote drumming program for them to close their, their day. And that's going to be myself and two and two other, you know, two other drummers. So that's kind of how we, it really depends on the program and the number of people in the audience. And to answer again, yes, anything from 10 up to, you know, 5,000, 30,000, we can do any size audience. Wow. So when you are servicing that many people, how do you, do they, how do they get involved with all playing a drum or do they take turns or how does that work? No. So everybody gets an instrument. Um, you know, I have about 5,000 drums, uh, Holy in the US, <laughs> but a lot of, so, so a lot of the times, you know, what, one thing we did once, uh, where we, we did something at, uh, in South Africa, in fact, at a, at a huge uh, rugby match, which is kind of like American football. Uh -huh. uh, we had, a, we had a, a telecom sponsor. There were 35,000 people in the audience and the telecom sponsor um, sponsored the, the, the manufacture of, you know, these uh, plastic kind of um, drums. At the, and this was, you know, probably 25 years ago. Uh -huh. uh, they sponsored, you know, these, these drums and everybody in the audience got one. Um, th there's many different ways we could, you know, we could do a mix of drums with boom whackers so that everybody in the audience has an instrument in hand. Um, I really don't, you know, oftentimes I get approached by event planners who say, well, let's just do, give half the people in the audience a, a drum and let the other people not have anything. Oh, and, that's not fun. And I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty <laughs> much about you know, it's either all in, you're either all collaborating or let's go with a, you know, cheaper option in terms of, you know, instrument that's lighter um, than a drum. So then it's that it's cheaper in terms of, you know, production and, and, and trans transfer or travel um, of the equipment or, you know, don't do any instruments and let's use people's bodies and do body percussion um, as, ah. as an alternative. So everybody's still getting involved. Um, but, you know, that would come purely from a budget standpoint. Um, otherwise, I, I really want to, I, I want to encourage people to make sure that everybody has an instrument so all are engaged. Otherwise, it defeats the purpose. So do you just ship all of this equipment to the hotels or the conference centers or wherever it's happening? Yes, we, um, so assuming it's happening in, a, in an area where I have, all the equipment in, in a warehouse in that area. I have, you know, a full on logistics team and warehouse team that, you know, brings the drums in bins, in trucks, and we offload at hotel loading docks, back of house. I mean, it's, it's a huge production. Yeah. Uh, and so I have a team that does that. Um, oftentimes, you know, we given kind of 15 or 20 minutes to take out, you know, 800 drums from a room because, <laughs> The company yeah. wants to start the next, uh, you know, the, the next thing after the break. And, you know, then obviously we, we ask for volunteers from the company, from the event planning company, 
or the uh -huh. implant themselves. Um, we find creative ways in, of, of getting the drums. You know, sometimes I would make an announcement at the end to get the drums to the back of the room or, you know, out with them at the break so that they've got the room free during the next session and we can do our, um, our loadout on yeah. you know, quietly outside of the room. So, so there's lots of creative ways to do that. But yes, we have a, we have a production team that handles, you know, all of that back of house. That's awesome. And I, I bet you probably, you can always tell like if, uh, how involved some people's are like, you know, I have to put my planner cap on and I'm like, okay, what about this and this and this? And like, as a participant, you know, it's like, oh, just show up and have a good time. You know, it's like, mm -hmm. but in planning these large conferences, like you're right. I mean, people, if you have 5,000 people there, how do you get all your stuff out? Um, but it would make sense to do something where they have a break afterwards. But I mean, I think that this is an amazing opportunity like for an opening or, but I guess like really it would be good from a logistics standpoint if they're the closers, <laughs> so then they're done. And then well, you can just load out. <laughs> I mean, actually, you know what? The, I find the opening, this, is, this can really go anywhere, really. I mean, honestly, we put it anywhere. Opening in the middle, you know, at the close. Some people use us for, um, an opening, uh, you know, one like opening program with boom whackers and on one day, and then on the third day, they close us with drums. You know, we make the logistics happen um, yeah. and we make it seamless. Uh, you know, we, my, one of my values really is, is to ensure that I make it easy to, to have my clients work with me. So yeah. I, I really work around them. So, you know, when they have conferences at round tables, even though I would prefer amphitheater style, I'll work around round tables. I'll work around amphitheater style. I'll do theater style settings, classroom style, you know, couches. I mean, we'll make it work in any way, shape or form. I've done it inside, outside. You know, I was taken by Google to Kenya. We did it kind of out in a in a in an outside kind of venue um, at the Wild Animal Park. I mean, oh we, my we, gosh. We, we've made it happen in every single type of um, venue possible, and um, we always make it happen. You know, it's just it's it's just working with the event planners who are either external planners or internal to the company, and really getting everybody to understand. The, 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 what it actually takes because it is a big production. Angela, I take my hat off to you, bow down, <laughs> bow down to you because it's a humongous, humongous job to, to plan an event. And you, you know, when, if I'm working with you, I'm just one of the vendors working with you. You're working yeah. with many, many different vendors and you have to make sure all these kind of cogs are moving in the right direction. And, yeah. you know, communication there is key. Um, being a really, really good project manager is key. And, and so those things are important just even in, in my business as well. Um, yeah. When that doesn't happen effectively, it's, it's very taxing on the performers, the facilitators, the, the meeting planners. It's never taxing on the end client because we make it seamless for them. And that's vitally important, but it, it is taxing back of house. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. And, and people who don't work in product, like in production, like they don't understand. Yeah. Um, so at least you get it. So what is the craziest? Do you have like the craziest request that you've ever been asked to do? Craziest? Uh, wow, that's a great question. <laughs> um, well, I, when I think craziest, um, I don't know that this is the craziest, but it's certainly a super interesting way of doing things. I'm actually about to do an event for a client that's coming um, from, you know, it's a global group. It's all board members. And we're going to meet in one location, split the group into four, have um, four facilitators, one per van so we're going to have minivans but are they they minivans that are more circular in shape um instead of your traditional van and we're going to have a facilitator in each van um we're going to have four different um pieces of a final orchestra orchestration if you will not orchestra so one van will have you know we'll have we'll have different instruments and some will have maybe there'll be a rhythm and song piece in another um 
but they're going to drive, they're going to have an hour to learn a certain kind of um, piece. And then they're going to arrive at a venue and we're going to pull all those pieces together and create kind of a big ensemble show with a big crescendo finish at the end. Uh, so crazy. I don't know if it's crazy, but it's certainly um, super creative and interesting. Um, the, I don't know. I think the other, you know, I've done, I've done events on the beach. I've done events, um, you know, in, in different countries, uh, I've done things at wild animal parks where there were kind of cheetahs in, in, you know, cages around and other animals around. Um, we've, we've done things pretty much everywhere. So do you, what, I wonder what the psychology is, but like, I totally get the beach, <laughs> but like, I wonder what the psychology of like having animals around, like if they're just trying to, um, create like a safari jungle type thing, or if they're yeah. like trying to see how people deal with like wild animals, like is, do you ever have planners or companies that say like, Hey, we're trying to psychologically see how people will react to a different type of entertainment or they don't go that deep. <laughs> they don't go that deep. And it's, okay. I, mean, I would love to be challenged with something like that uh, <laughs> because, you know, I guess, you know, the wild animal thing is, is important because really at that, at that particular event, and it was for a, for a large bank, um, we actually had to, to stop and start over because the animals, oh. it was really affecting the animals. Really? They, were, they were in too close proximity to, to the drumming. Yeah, it was, it, oh. was, um, it was pretty shocking for them. Uh, I mean, in the wild, you know, I, I come from South Africa where we have the, uh, the bush very, you know, close, well, not close by to where we live, but I mean, we travel to the bush and when you, when you're traveling in the bush and you're in a, you're in a motor vehicle or you're in a Jeep, you know, there's always the request to keep very quiet amongst the wild, wild animals because it, you know, they, they are not used to that. Right. Um, so that happened at that particular event, but I would love to be challenged because there's so many psychological elements around, you know, drumming in terms of the neuroscience of learning and, left and right brain kind of coordination and working with drumming as, as a, as a holistic or healing kind of, um, what would you say? A, a healing methodology. Yeah. Um, but you know, I have a, a, another leadership development company called blue fire leadership, which, you know, I really utilize, I, I take this, the, the, the one hour, um, how would you call it? The one hour, the one hour kind of team build. Wow. Uh -huh. um, inspirational, motivational, like, you know, kind of superficial learning because you're not mm -hmm. you know, to change a habit. You need more than an hour to change a habit. You need at least 10 to 21 days, or they say 21 right. days to change a habit. Um, and I, certain of my clients have challenged me to do that on a longer term basis inside of their organizations. And, you know, so from that, I developed a leadership company, that handles the deeper dives um, into team development and leadership development using rhythm uh, as one of the elements, not all. Um, so, so it's a, it's, it's interesting. It's an interesting challenge. It's so fascinating to me. Like, I mean, I'm just such a nerd when it comes to like psychology and entertainment and, you know, as a planner, like I like to stand up on the stage, like off to the side, obviously, and like look out and like watch the people's, reactions because usually it's not what they're expecting yeah. and that's why I love the idea for an opening because it can put people in a different mindset that they didn't even know that they had the potential of thinking that way but then I can also see it as a closing act you know for a feel good and a pump up and get people excited but like if I had to choose from a psychological angle I would say you know let's do it in the beginning um, just because I think it puts people in a different mindset it's so you're, fascinating like you're absolutely right it's so cool what you do <laughs> the, the opening busts it's them so open neat and kind of prepares them for the rest of the conference and it kind of mm -hmm. you know, gets that left right brain thinking and busts their bust them out of their mind into their body space so they open to receive closing the conference really ends with them on a high note and it ties it's like taking a bunch of balloons and tying all those con balloon content pieces together yeah. You know, all the strings into one tight, beautiful bow. Um, 
and, and so they leave with all the different messages coming together in, into, into one core message. So it, it really works in both places, but I, I'm, I'm fully with you. The opening is just super powerful. Um, yeah. And I really encourage uh, Angela, like work, I really am going to encourage wanting to, you know, I put it out to the universe this year that I want to work with planners that really want to stretch um, the mm -hmm. creative kind of, the, the, the creative realm where we can bring in aerial drummers and we can do, you know, bring in instruments like the theremin and bring in really funky stuff that engages people at the same time as wows them and, and, and just, you know, creates this dynamic, um, inspirational, you know, even bringing some storytelling. I'm, I'm working on a project right now, which is going to look at storytelling in different divisions of an organization and taking those stories and doing kind of a theatrical performance, um, mm -hmm. which is also engaging and interactive and it's called Pulse. And um, it's kind of, if you had to describe it, it's like taking the Blue Man group and 60 Minutes and having them have a baby. Oh my gosh, <laughs> so cool. <laughs> That's kind of how I describe it. Um, I love it. So yeah, so that's that's that. I just, you're so outside of the box. I just absolutely love it. If people want to learn more and watch some of these amazing, I mean, you guys have some amazing videos online because I went on after you and I first met and I'm like, oh my God, this is incredible. Like we got to do this. Um, and, but you know, it does have to be for the right client. I will say that. Um, some of the large organizations that we work with, they're a little bit stale and they're a little bit like afraid to step out of the comfort zone. I'm actually, I'm like, I want to have fun clients that want to do something and like push the limits and do something different and take a chance and take a risk. And I just feel like that this is something that is a really easy sell, but again, it has to be the right client. So you know, that's, that's a whole different subject of, I mean, it sounds, it sounds like our, our dreams are going to collide, Angela, because yes. I think you work with people who want to do that as well. You know, planners who want to, who want to really stretch and work with clients who want to stretch and, and, you know, that way it's that growth, it's that growth mindset, right? In, instead of the fixed mindset. Yes. Like it's the, you've got to be put in the, it is, it's all about the mindset. And again, why I love the beginning of it is because people are so not expecting it. <laughs> it's like a completely different mindset. And then it's just, it takes you somewhere totally, totally different. Um, but where should people go to drumcafenorthamerica.com? Yes. So www.drumcafenorthamerica.com uh, and right on the homepage, you're going to get a bunch of different videos. Um, and, you know, in the, in the different programming uh, pull downs, you'll also find videos for each of our different programs there. Um, so yeah, that would be the place to go. Um, and if anybody wants to connect with me, it's natalie at drumcafenorthamerica.com. That's awesome. I love it. Thank you so much for sharing everything that you shared today. And then if you, um, if for any of our listeners, if yes. you mention this podcast yes. and you're interested in working with Natalie, you will receive 15% off of your first event with Natalie and her team, which thank you so much. That's so generous. That's amazing. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Do you have a, a favorite social platform that you would like for people to follow you on? Well, we're on Instagram um, and we're also on, uh, obviously, if you follow me on LinkedIn, um, there's, there's, you know, but Instagram, we, we kind of put a lot of video and, and pictures and, and we have a fun Tuesday and Thursday Instagram feature, um, which one of my uh, staff members handles herself. Merced Miking and she she does that and it's they they're super fun and we've had a lot of um, interested you know co or interesting conversations out of it. Um, so those are the two platforms I would say are, are are the best platforms. Got it. That's awesome. So y'all, we'll put it in the show notes. Be sure that you watch some of these videos. It's just incredible. It's so unique and different. And be sure to reach out to Natalie for your next conference performance, a wedding performance. If you want something unique and out of the box and get the audience involved, this is 
what you need. Seriously. (laughs) So Natalie, thank you so much for your time today and everyone that's listening. Thank you so much for listening to another episode of business unveiled and be sure that you tune in next week for another episode. Have a great day. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Now that you have all the tools you need to conquer the world in GSD, just share this with your friends and your fellow GSD leaders and be sure you're a subscriber so you never miss the juicy details of Business Unveiled and you can ask Siri to listen to the latest episode, but you got to be a subscriber. Before I go, I have a huge favor to ask and it would mean the world to me. While you're listening, snap a quick screenshot post it to your Instagram story, tag me at GSD leader underscore and share with me your top takeaway from this episode and how it relates to you. Until next time, remember, stay productive and profitable. You've been listening to Business Unveiled with Angela Profit. Join us next time as we share our experiences to help you be more productive and profitable in your creative business. For more great resources, visit AngelaProfit.com.